morning and welcome to Biz Roundup. I am Tamiru Nimsat and we at Art Television bring you a collection of business highlights. Let's have a look at the headlines. China assures support for Sri Lanka without a hidden agenda. CEB plans to add 1700 megawatts to the national power grid. Aswasuma benefits will be deposited before December, officials says. News in detail. President Xi Jinping of the People's Republic of China stated that China is committed to assisting Sri Lanka in achieving economic stability without any political agenda. He expressed his desire to collaborate closely with President Ranil Vikramasinghe. The Chinese Premier said this during a meeting between the delegations of the two countries on the sidelines of the Belt and Road Initiative last week. President Xi Jinping acknowledged that Sri Lanka's speech at the United Nations General Assembly reflected the country's strategic independence and its neutral stance. President Xi Jinping also reiterated China's commitment to the One China policy and expressed gratitude for Sri Lanka's support for the Belt and Road Initiative. He highlighted the port city and Hambantota port as key projects under this initiative and pledged to promote imports of Sri Lankan products to China and increase investments in Sri Lanka. President Sri Jinping assured that China would provide friendly, practical and timely support for Sri Lanka's debt optimization program. President Xi Jinping also mentioned the historical relations between China and Sri Lanka, citing travel notes by the Fahian monk and Xinghe. During the meeting, President Vikramasinghe expressed his appreciation for China's long-standing support to Sri Lanka and commended President Xi Jinping for his consistently friendly attitude towards Sri Lanka. President Vikramasinghe informed his counterpart about plans to construct a Buddhist temple and stupa in commemoration of the visit of Fahian monk to Sri Lanka. President Ranil Vikramasinghe expressed Sri Lanka's hope to establish a maritime economic corridor linking China, Myanmar, Sri Lanka and South Africa. The conversion also emphasized the significance of positioning Sri Lanka as an economic hub in the Indian Ocean region. President Vikramasinghe underlined Sri Lanka's commitment to perceiving peace and the identity of the Indian Ocean region advocating for corruption between India and China. President Ranil Vikramasinghe disclosed Sri Lanka's ambition to achieve developed status by 2048. He further highlighted the substantial foundation provided by the eight-step program unveiled at the 3RD Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation. The two leaders and the delegation further discussed the ongoing conflict in the Gaza Strip. Attendees at the event included Foreign Minister Ali Sabri, President's Chief Staff Sagala Ratnayaka and Central Bank Governor Nandala Virasinghe. The Ceylon Electricity Board said that a bulk supply transaction account will be created in order to guide the electricity tariffs in a stable path from the 31st of December. The Acting General Manager of Ceylon Electricity Board said this during a press conference held in Colombo last Friday. Mama. Yang nak amati ini awasan awan terlisa ini oleh oleh bulk supply transaction account kira ni. Apik kriyat muka kerja ni nih. Ika apik peti dia na dua dua. Kira kira ni beno. Rata kaiti ada apik bulk supply transaction macam tang tu ke sape um sansaran lagi nuh. Apik kriyat muka kerja ni nih. Ini tu lah apik tarif ni kah apik dia suruh lese haru kami hari parik ini yang nak kerja macam ni. Ini bagi ini macam ini ni. Submissions. Ini adalah tami tarif yang kami masa hari ini ada minat sekali nak kini. Kabinet mandiri nanu mata bela peribadi yang kaiti itu ini dak panne ini dia urut. Ita kaling ini memang peribadi yang tiup net ni. E peribadi ini urut apa aja? Viduli bela mandiri penting. Api visin nara toga sansaran lagi nu mana saada nuge ni mat tulur. Api arbu deh kat gigi lati puna. Rata janata apa sielu deh nara dhan ni viduli milak iya ni ka? Stabre ka? Eka minat sekali ni? Eka minat sekali nu nai kelu kuk dia bela kaiti itu? Eka ni ये पीली बंदे क्रमवेद या तिबुन है कि जी मैं आरबुदे या समस्त या कुछ ऐसे मार्ग तक पर नहीं मिलने में क्रमवेद है नतीबी बंद अभी तो महाजन उपयोगी था कोई समय नो तेज सदा नियोग्य आती है ना वो कि अभी तब बेंतर वासी नहीं सदा समस्त क्रियावली कर गिने आना दिसंबर तीस से कभी न कोटा अभी हुए तो पुनर्जन ये बाल शक्ति का तो क्रमवेद की प्राप्ति है ना मिनी हाइड्रो का तो कुड़ा परिमाणी हाइड्रो का तो 
megawatt harasiya tisse ka adhe vena kudhe thiye na wa ground mounted solar bima mata savikar na lada solar suray padhatin asu deke king megawatt ekasiya tisse ka gan na wa adhe vena kudhe wahala mata savikar na lada suray panel lagato leko a itne at samag gatta ma panas da agar vedi pari bogi ke ingeng megawatt atasiya katasiya panag ne pramaniya वहाल मत सविकरलाट अमतर वेस्ट एनर्जी आप कुन कसल कुन कसल वाली मेगावोट दहायाट अमतर डेन्ड्रो दर दर भावित आकल्ला पवर प्लांट पहाकिंग मेगावोट विस्सकट आसन्न प्रमाण अभी लाभ गाट अमतर बयोमैसली प्लांट सतगी मेगावोट विस्सक गाँव विन पवर सुलांग मगिंग गो पवर प्लांट दहाट कि मेगावाट एक पनासाट गवासा अभी हम वेले में पुनर्जननीय बलशक्ति के रही तम अपे प्रधान विश्वास ईट अम तरव गम मे वन वीट तव मेगावाट एक सत्सिया इधरी वसल तुना हतर तुल जातिक विद्युत बल पद्धति अट एक Welcome back after the break. Prime Minister Dinesh Gunawardena sought the assistance of the International Chamber of Commerce in overcoming the economic crisis in Sri Lanka by playing an active role in the economy. This was discussed when the first female chair of the ICC, Maria Fernanda Gaza, called on Prime Minister Dinesh Gunawardena at the Temple Trees recently. They discussed the role of ICC in arbitration in trade and investment, banking, insurance, finance, tourism, agriculture. SME support and entrepreneurship development the prime minister briefed her on the priorities that include food security and exports chairperson gaza said that icc represents 170 countries with a corporate membership of 45 million companies she said that the agriculture policy and food safety and supply chain committee of icc aims to provide support to help navigate pressing challenges of food security Gaza also stressed the importance of digitalization of the economy to ensure global standards so it could be opened up for SMEs in agriculture and industrial sectors. ICC also provides a platform for engagement in governance, sustainability, anti-corruption and advocacy in best practices. ICC Banking Committee is represented by all the banks operating in Sri Lanka and meets quarterly. with Sri Lanka customs to accelerate trade facilitation State Minister for Investment Promotion Dilum Mamunugama announced plans to establish a Japan Sri Lanka free trade zone in the country The state minister mentioned that the areas of Bingiria and Iranavila have been selected for this purpose The minister made this announcement during a press conference held at the Presidential Media Center recently State Minister Samunagama further elaborated on the progress related to the port city which has been temporarily open to the public. The State Minister said the port city is being developed under a third party agreement with 15 billion US dollars allocated for this purpose. The State Minister mentioned that China Harbour Engineering Company has already completed 80% of the construction work. He also said that the legal framework necessary for doing business in the port city has been prepared and several operating regulations are scheduled for approval by the parliament. The state minister further said investments of about 1.6 billion US dollars have already arrived with an additional 1.6 billion dollars in investments underway. He further mentioned that the government is planning to sell 28 project land plots to investors including 74 plots for business purposes and 44 for public use. He went on to say that the free trade zone will be supported by the Japanese Sri Lankan Business Council and Japanese entrepreneurs interested in creating free trade zones in Sri Lanka. State Minister Targa Balasurya says that it is not the developing countries but few developed countries are mainly responsible for the issue of gas emissions in the world. State Minister Balasurya made these observations at a media briefing held at the Government Information Department. recently to brief the media over the archipelagic and island states forum 2023 which is most known as AIS forum which took place recently in Bali Indonesia 
the AIS conference is a conference on um, archipelago and island states uh, initiated by the Indonesia, the world's largest uh, archipelago with 18,000 islands. Uh, the main uh, idea of the conference is how uh, the resilience uh, to the climate change can be mitigated uh, and also how all these island states can uh, collaborate together. We know that uh, most of the, the emissions, if you look at uh, around the world, 95% of the emissions have been emitted uh, by the developed countries and uh, not by the developing countries. But uh, unfortunately, the, everybody has to uh, face the music. And I think this has, uh, uh, apart from uh, methodologies used to, um, for things such as developing the blue economy, uh, I think this uh, the forum has a great importance to Sri Lanka. We see that there are different uh, environmental groups such as the AIS, there are other groups uh, around the world. Uh, so we feel that uh, all these groups should be brought uh, under one umbrella uh, and I think the, uh, the Climate Justice uh, Forum would uh, try to initiate that. Stay tuned, we will return after this short commercial break. Welcome back after the break. Power and Energy Minister Kanchan Vijay Sekar announced that a new mechanism will be implemented to revise electricity tariffs once every three months as opposed to the existing biannual revisions. Minister Kanchan Vijay Sekar said this speaking to journalists at the Presidential Media Center yesterday. The minister clarified that there was a prevailing misconception regarding the Ceylon Electricity Board's authority to revise tariffs. The minister emphasized that the CEB has the authority to request tariff adjustments, particularly in the event of a crisis. Minister Conchon said this process has been utilized for the recent tariff revisions, ensuring compliance with legal guidelines. Minister Vijay Sekar noted that although certain areas have experienced flooding, the region's housing power generating reservoirs have not received significant rainfall. Vijay Sekar say the total power output as of 22nd October 2023 is reported to be 2,893.76 gigawatt hours. Minister Vijay Sekar further revealed plan for a comprehensive restructuring of the Ceylon Electricity Board, which will soon be presented to the Cabinet of Ministers. The minister disclosed that accumulated financial loss suffered by the power sector from the year 2014 to 2020-22 amounts to 565 billion rupees. The minister further said that to support the CEB during this period, the government extended a working capital subsidy of 257 billion rupees. State Minister for Finance Shehan Seema Singh stated that the staff-level agreement plays a pivotal role in facilitating the payment of arrears to multilateral creditors and expediting the process of debt restructuring. The State Minister further said that Sri Lanka is poised to receive the second tranche of 330 million US dollars subsequent to the IMF approval. The State Minister made these remarks at a press conference held at the Presidential Media Center last week. Minister Seymour Singh elaborated on the journey to reach this pivotal staff-level agreement. He said that despite Sri Lanka's favourable position with the International Monetary Fund, subsequent disruptions and misinterpretations arose in the recent weeks. The State Minister emphasised that there is no reason to fear the approval of the Executive Committee or the release of the second instalment. He noted that the staff-level agreement will enable the World Bank, Asian Development Bank and other multilateral financial institutions to make the remaining payments. The State Minister noted that this will further expedite debt restructuring efforts with international partners. The State Minister expressed optimism that agreements related to debt restructuring may soon be finalised. Seymo Singer further said that it will align with the government's objectives of reducing corruption and increasing transparency. He cited the IMF's praise for Sri Lanka's economic progress and noted that this reflects international confidence in the country's economic prospects. The Welfare Benefits Board urged the beneficiaries whose names have been listed but are yet to open bank accounts to do so without delay in order to receive their entitled benefits. The Presidential Media Division said that the request was made during the meeting at the President's office recently. 
The PMD reported that the meeting involved the Welfare Benefit Board and other relevant parties, including the State Minister of Finance, Shehan Sema Singh. Chairman of the Welfare Benefits Board, Jayanta Vijay Ratna, had disclosed that over 7 billion have been disbursed to over 1.2 million families as of October 16th. It was also revealed that there have been delays in providing payments to a group of beneficiaries due to various issues. The President's Media reported that State Minister Shehan Sema Singh emphasized the need to expedite the disbursement of benefits. It was revealed that approximately 200,000 people have faced delays in receiving the payments due to the absence of bank accounts. The chairman of the Welfare Benefit Board had said that once the accounts are opened, the associated payments can be promptly deposited. The importance of maintaining a robust unit within the divisional secretary's offices for the execution of the relief program was emphasized at the meeting. It was also suggested to declare a special work week to facilitate the completion of benefit payments by the end of December. With that, we wind up for today. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. See you tomorrow with State of Business at 7.45 p.m. Take care and good night.